So this is a talk I gave at GDEX 2020, which happened back in October. So it took me a couple months to get around to uploading this. But uh, yeah, it's a talk about game design. Hope you enjoy it. My name is Dave Pickett. You might have just met my future self who introduced me. So thank you for that, future me. Um, I'm going to be talking today about Towards a Game Design Thesaurus. Uh, and my Twitter handle's there at the bottom. If you already decided that you like me so much, you want to go follow me and hear all my thoughts in the future. Anyway, what do I mean by a game design thesaurus and the words toward? So I've been uh, really focused on studying game design for about a year. I am in an MFA program at DePaul University, which started back in 2019, or, you know, I started there. And uh, I've got a history with game design before that, Mario Maker, you know, StarCraft map editor, yada, yada, yada. But um, the last year has really been when I've been trying to study it intensely and shift my whole career towards it. So in that time, I have repeatedly returned to a central question, which is, what are games? Right, like this was one of the first things we looked at in uh, my coursework is what is a game? How do we define what a game is and what is not a game? Uh, what's the difference between play and games and games and toys? And how do we think about those things? And what are the kind of salient features of games? Um, and knowing those features, then how do we use that knowledge to create new games that create the experiences we want to create for players or you know, a range of possible experiences. Uh, that to me is what game design is, is kind of understanding what are games and then how do I wanna make a game that has an impact on a player? That's to me uh, kind of what game design is. And so you know, game design is a discipline, right? It's a, it's a field of knowledge um, it's a field of um, actual production. Um, the you know game studies is still relatively new as a academic discipline. Um, games are ancient, but when we talk about games, sometimes we're just talking about video games. Like a lot of the talks today here are probably about video games as opposed to the whole range of games. So when I say what are games, right? I'm thinking about things like sports live action role playing, board games, lotteries, puzzles, card games, video games, toys, and play, right? So when we say what are games, depending on the context, we could mean one specific thing here. We could mean the whole range of them um, or somewhere in between. Um, some of these words on this screen are intentional provocations, right? Some people don't consider puzzles games because puzzles, typically have single solutions and people think uh, that games must have multiple possible endings uh, or outcomes. And so a puzzle that has a single solution doesn't fit their criteria of game. That's um, right. We could also think of how does game differ from the, the broad category of interactive experience or interactive media? Um, is that what we mean by the word game? It depends on who you're talking to. So this is, this is a hard problem, right? The, the things that are encompassed in the word games are, are various and difficult and they feel overwhelming. How do we even get a grasp on something, a field this varied? It seems a lot harder than talking about literature, right? Literature seems much more bound, right? Um, that would be fiction, novels, poetry, maybe, but right, like, it's all like words and stuff. And, you know, the, the format seems really consistent. So that would seem like a field that's easier to comprehend um, than games. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, depends who you're talking to. So anyway, if we have games as a nebulous thing, right, that's already a, an issue. What is design language, right? Because we're thinking about a game design thesaurus. So a thesaurus is a collection of language that's linked in a certain way, different than a dictionary, different than a lexicon. Um, but we're specifically thinking about design language, right? Not just any language, but the language of design. Um, so we'll get to what game design language is, but what are other design languages? How do we think about what it means to have design language? 
So if we were thinking about writing literature, right, we might think of the craft of writing, right? So writers who write about writing, right? Like that is design advice. Um, and they might have a lot of different terminology or jargon to describe what they you do in writing or what you do in filmmaking, uh, right? Like uh, what does a dolly zoom shot mean to a cinematographer versus what does uh, the passive voice mean to a writer, right? These are terms that help explain phenomena inside media. Um, we could also think of how to, like how to write your first novel, how to write a haiku. These are, um, when we think about designing creative projects, there are lots of different ways we can come into that with different terms. Um, you might argue whether or not theory about media, like literary criticism, if that's really design term, like literary design terminology versus like a creative writing terminology. Um, but the analysis of um, literature or games or film also creates terms which are then used by practitioners, right? And there's often like a really great um, overlap and interplay between those. And often, you know, writers have some level of analysis and criticism and vice versa, though not always, right? Those can be kind of mutually exclusive. We also might think about architects, right? The blueprint for a building is, is a design language. It's a language of symbols and shapes and colors and notations, right? There's not necessarily a lot of words in that design language of a blueprint, but we understand how a blueprint leads ultimately to a product and how the language of blueprints is a whole thing which has specialized um, notations and markings, which mean things like how you represent a door. I don't know that much about blueprints, but some people do. We can also think about behind the scenes features for um, movies or TV shows, right? How do people who make a thing talk about making that thing? Um, that's what I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about design language. What is the structure of the thing that we are making? And what are the different ways we try to des describe that thing <laughs> and the making of that thing, whether through words, symbols, um, visuals, um, sounds, uh, right? Music probably has a whole thing that's more sound focused in, in, in terminology. In addition to having language about terminology, but if you think about, anyway, that's all. Side note, anyway. <laughs> All right, so here's a question. What is a book, right? If we're thinking about, again, parallels to game design, let's think about literature. Literature, <laughs> literature, literature involves books generally, right? So if we think about what are the component parts of a book, what are some of these terms that are important to understand if you're trying to create, design a book, right? Books typically have chapters, and chapters typically have paragraphs. Paragraphs are made up of sentences, and sentences are made up of, of words. You might not think of those four things as design terminology, because um, as um, the way education currently works, we are all pretty well versed in the design terminology of writing and books and literature, right? That's pretty basic stuff that is taught in elementary, middle, um, and you know high schools, you get that in primary education, right? You don't necessarily get film terminology. Maybe kids do now, I didn't. Uh, you don't necessarily get other terminologies for other types of creative work, but typically you'll get some understanding of how books, uh, stories come together, right? A book could also be about the fonts, right? the pages, the paper, the physical materials. And then we could talk about, well, does a book, is a book still a book if it's an ebook? The, right? And yes, like that's not really what I'm concerned about, right? Because it's more what's in the book, the content, right? The ideas. Some books have diagrams, right? If we're thinking about textbooks, right? I'm getting away from literature um, here, but you know, plot could also be a thing we think about a book having. Here's another way we could look at this thing. What is a novel? 
So a novel is, you know, like a core thing of literature, right? And a novel is a specific type of way of telling a story. Um, and if we think about a novel, we might think about themes, characters, arcs, uh, moods, subtext, my favorite, a protagonist, obstacle, actions, events, scenes, goals. And if we think about these things, we're really talking about story structure rather than a book structure, because all of these words could really apply to a movie, probably a video game, paintings, maybe? Like a lot of the things here are not necessarily specific to novels. Um, and right, we can go back, well, a novel is also often a book. So all the things that describe a book also kind of describe a novel. So we've already got like a robust set of words and ways to approach thinking about that kind of creative production. Anyway, let's go back to games. What is a game, right? Just imagine a game. It can be any game. It can be a video game, a sport, uh, a mind game that you play with somebody, cards, um, role playing, whatever you consider a game. Now imagine the full game from start to finish. Games typically have a beginning and an end, right? They might have multiple ends, they might have multiple beginnings, they might have multiple middles, but usually they've at least one beginning, middle, and end, right? Um, and that's true of a lot of things and media and art that they have a narrative, well, not necessarily narrative, like a, a structure like that. So if we think of a game, and then we're like, all right, let's chunk this game up a little bit. So if we chunk it into three parts, right? And those parts have very different feelings or experiences or whatever, right? We, we wanna be able to talk about this part, this part, this part. So what are the words different games use to talk about kind of their largest subsection? So, right, if we're thinking about sports, right? If this was baseball, those would be innings. Right? An inning is um, where both teams get to do both things and points might happen. If we're thinking about a video game like Mario, this would be worlds, right? It's a collection of stuff that has a unique feel and you know, is a moment, uh, a large moment in the game. If we're thinking about role playing, this might be a campaign, right? Because you might be playing a character for a long time in this game, but you might have multiple campaigns or quests right? If we're thinking about hockey, I think, has periods are like kind of the three big chunks. And you could go on and on and on thinking about many types of games and how they talk about this, right? And this is different than books and chapters, right? There are, the terminology is so diverse and um, all over the place because kind of every game invents its own terminology for these things sometimes. Um, right? If you just think about sports, all, many different sports have many different names, like whether it's an inning, a period, a quarter, a half, whatever, right? To describe the largest chunk. Oh, right. We could also think of these as chapters in a game, uh, rounds in like, uh, if this is a card game, phases, acts, events, areas, chunks, right? There's many different ways that we could think about what is the largest subsection of this game. All right, <laughs> now let's go deeper, right? So we've got a game, we've found some big chunks, we're calling it a quest, a round, a chunk, whatever. And now there's subparts that kind of make up each of those. So what do we call those, right? So we could think about a level, right? If we were thinking about a world for Mario, Mar Mario worlds are made up of levels. Um, if this is an open world game, it might be more like an encounter that's part of a quest. Um, if uh, this is like a, a card game, if there's a hand th that we are thinking of as the large chunk, then a turn, an individual player's turn, is kind of the sub chunk because those all add up to hands. Um, if we think of a puzzle, an individual clue like 26 down in a crossword might be... Um, the, this subchunk because the down clues are the larger chunk. The across or the downs is how you break up the two large chunks of a crossword puzzle. So then individually, it might be clue. If we're thinking about a narrative game, this might be a choice, right? 
because things are determined by choice. We might also think of hand here, right? Depending on the card game, there are different levels of complexity. If we're thinking about a NASCAR race, this might be a lap, right? Um, or lap might be the level above. It depends. I don't know, <laughs> right? I'm just really trying to show the way a thesaurus of game design might help us think about what we call things and what is the connection between a level in Mario and a lap in NASCAR or a lap in Mario Kart um, or a encounter in World of Warcraft and uh, the down 26 clue in the crossword puzzle. Um, and how do we, how do as designers, we think about the different valences and um, you know subtle variations of that? I don't know. I always find a thesaurus way more helpful than a dictionary. So that's why I'm interested in this kind of stuff, right? And we break those. So we had the game, then we had subsections, then we had sub subsections. And now we go to sub sub subsection. So these are kind of like where you get into the nitty gritty tiny pieces of a game. So like an individual non-player character in an RPG, a move, right? Because your turn in a board game, you might have multiple actions or multiple moves. You might play a card. Um, we could think of game mechanics, verbs, right? What the player can do, a jump, um, a single hit in a combat game a space on a board game, or the tokens, right? We can think of these as physical components. We can think of these as um, ideological components, theoretical components. Um, there's, there's many ways that like this whole area is iterated on and defined, but I just like to think of like how do, again, if we're looking broadly across lots of different types of games, what are the clusters of things that have similar types of meanings in relation to their game, right? So these, I hope you can see how these are all like very granular things that then add up into um, these small things that then add up into these medium-sized things that add up into a game. And we can also go the other direction, right? Because a single game in a in baseball might be part of a series, right? A single playthrough of a game might be part of a season or a campaign. Um, so there's lots, of, right? We can think about the metagame, right? So an individual round of Overwatch is kind of a game uh, or a session, but you know, there's a series of those that might be linked into a session or, or our overall experience, a tournament. Right? There's many different ways in which we understand there's a game that happens, and then that's part of a group of that game occurring, which then have some larger rule and structure above them, um, whether that's a metagame, a campaign, a season, whatever. And then right, we can go a level above that and say, well, there is also the game. Right, A game of baseball might be part of a series, but even the series, the seasons, all of that is all part of the game of baseball, right? Um, so that is <laughs> uh, pretty crazy. Hopefully it was interesting, hopefully enlightening. I'm looking forward to lots of questions and discussions in the future when this video ends. Um, right, like this, this is all I have. I, I, I think about this a lot. If anyone ever wants to pay me to try and build all of this kind of stuff in a way that other people could use, please reach out to me. But in the meantime, right, thinking across these is really hard. So it's also helpful to have, you know, dictionaries, glossaries, things like that. One of the best I've found um, that really kind of breaks things down and has them in a hierarchy is the design-oriented topic wheel. Um, so you can find that at designoriented.net slash wheel. It's really cool in that, you know, again, their words might be different than the words you use, but they, they definitely go through like breaking down these kind of tiny chunks into middle chunks, into larger chunks. And, you know, there's color and it's fun and interactive. Um, so that's like a good way if you're just trying to understand what some of these terms are. Um, I don't know. We're all kind of <laughs> desperately struggling, I think, 
to create a better craft language for game design. Um, I try to be very broadly <laughs> read, um, try to follow a lot of tabletop designers as well as video game designers. I'm not good at following things about sports or play or the mathematical game theory type stuff, but all of that is really connected to trying to understand that central question of what are games and how do I make the next game that I want to make? And how do I find the little pieces that can affect the player's experience and put them together in the right way and treat, tweak the right ones that really add up to the cumulative kind of game experience that I want? Uh, so yeah. Thank you for listening. My name is Dave Pickett. My website is davepickett.co, no M. My Twitter handle is David M. Pickett, and I am currently looking for a job in video games, so please hire me if you think I'm cool. All right, bye.